Republicans. We're joined now by Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna of California. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Congressman. You were, of course, part of the progressive group that met with President Biden at the White House yesterday. The White House called the meetings constructive. So did the president. He expre expressed urgency as far as getting to a final agreement before he heads overseas next week. And is that timeline realistic, would you say, given where the talks are right now? Lindsay, we have to meet that timeline. The president spoke about the need for him to go to Glasgow with some deliverables. The American leadership is at stake. Our leadership on climate is at stake. He looked at each of us in the eye and he said, I need this. He appealed to our patriotism. I believe the House will deliver and the Senate will deliver. And let's talk numbers here. Are progressives now willing to accept that this final package will be somewhere between uh, one and a quarter and two trillion dollars? Can can House Democrats even sign on to that level if the spending is put on priorities that you can all agree on? Well, it's still ongoing negotiations. I don't want to give a specific number, but I will say that the House progressives recognize that there will be significant cuts, that many of these programs aren't going to be 10 years and that we have to compromise. And the reality is we have to have a plan that Senator Sinema, Senator Manchin can sign on or uh, sign on to because it takes 51 votes in the Senate. Uh, that reality is, is very clear. Are progressives willing to bend on issues like leaving out funding for tuition-free community college, scaling back paid family leave from 12 weeks to four weeks, and also expanding the child tax credit for just one year? Would you say that there are red lines that you can't agree on? One of the red lines is climate, but on paid family leave, I don't think four weeks is enough. I think anyone who knows someone who has been pregnant will tell you that four weeks isn't enough. So we're pushing back to say, let's have something more realistic, even if we have to have less years. On the child tax credit, what is most important is that we don't means test that beyond the American Rescue Plan. But the big issue for progressives is climate. We need to make sure that we have 50 percent reduction by 2030. That's the president's goal. That's his commitment. We have to send it to Glasgow with a plan that will achieve that, especially given that the Europeans and the Chinese are going to be coming there with their plan. And today, your colleague, Congressman Richie Torres, uh, called expanding the child tax credit for just one year a, quote, death sentence for the program. Would you agree? I want to say it's a death sentence. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Richie Torres. You know, he's the product of public housing, so this is deeply personal for him. His concern is that we don't have a single Republican vote. What happens if the Democrats aren't in charge? I do believe that once we have the program, there will be so much popular support for it that Republicans will find it hard to repeal. But I understand his concern. I mean, he uh, is right to say that it should be for longer, but we, we're in a situation where we have to get 51 Senate votes. So would you say that the goal for you is to fund more programs for a short period of time and then hope that they get extended again down the road? Yes, yeah, not just my goal. I think that's the president's approach. If you look at what's in this bill, it has every American is going to get preschool. That's a big deal. We're going to have child care for every family. You're going to have this child allowance for working class and middle class families. Seniors are going to get dental, hearing, vision, uh, and we're going to have massive investments in uh, climate and new, renewable energy and new jobs. So there's a lot of good things in the bill, which is why progressives are willing to compromise, because we want these investments for the working class. But can enough Democrats agree on that kind of framework? I think so. And I'll tell you why. I, I've been skeptical in the past, but this time I saw the president is so deeply engaged. He is committed to this. He wants this done. He was going through line item by line item, the numbers. He is committed to getting the two holdout senators on board, and he's committed to hearing our uh, concerns and, and, and striking a compromise. And I have confidence in him, given how engaged he now is. But would you say that that kind of approach is dangerous, though, if Republicans take over the House or Senate next year? Well, first, I don't think that the Republicans will take it over. Of course not. <laughs> uh, and we have to pass this if we uh, want to, to have a good chance in the election. But if they do take over, the history shows that they often don't repeal things that Democrats put in. We put in Social Security. We put in Medicare. They're often opposed to that. We put in the Affordable Care Act. They were opposed to it. But then they find it's very hard to repeal because people actually like these programs. I acknowledge it's a gamble. It's, it, it's better to have it for the long term. Uh, but I, I, our hope is that once you plant the idea, the principle, that they will be very hard to repeal.
Okay, so lastly, let's talk about what you call that red line, that biggest sticking point, that's the climate change, basically. Is there any solution in sight that both House progressives and Senator Manchin, who represents a coal state, can agree on when it comes to clean energy, energy provisions to cut back on carbon emissions? Yes, I think we're exploring that. First, I, I believe we need to guarantee high-paying good jobs in West Virginia. Let's say 100,000 of, of those jobs should be in West Virginia, because those communities have been hard hit. Mining families have been hard hit. They don't want a handout. They want real proof of the jobs, and we should do that. Uh, but we're looking at things like state block grants and incentives for states to hit a renewable goal, things that are flexible that hopefully Senator Manchin also will see as in the, in the interest of the planet, our country, and his state. Congressman Ro Khanna, we thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you coming on the show. I really appreciate you having me on.